Good evening. This is Bill Boehner of Employee and Community Relations Operation of the General Electric Company at Hanford. Tonight we are inaugurating a new program series on Cascade Television called Inside Hanford. On tonight's show and on programs to follow at regular intervals, we hope to acquaint you with some of the work being performed behind the Hanford barricade. I'm sure that most of you know that at Hanford we manufacture plutonium, a vital ingredient of atomic bombs. And I'm equally sure that most of you know this is a model of a Piper Cub airplane. Now, it might seem out of place to speak in the same breath of plutonium and Piper Cubs, but such is not the case. Men of the Air Patrol at Hanford, flying Piper Cubs, much like this one, are an important part of the security system that guards our atomic secrets at Hanford. And the men of the Air Patrol and the important work they do are the subjects of Inside Hanford this evening. We'll be showing some film clips of the Air Patrol in action, and later on, we'll be talking to several of the men who direct the activities of this important part of the Hanford security system. Now let's take a look at Wings Over Hanford. Pilots of the Air Patrol are often called upon to fly over the Yakima and Columbia Rivers to search for the bodies of drowning victims. This is not a pleasant task, but this unpleasantness is more than made up when they share the rewarding experience of helping save a life, such as in the case you've just seen. Later on in our program, we'll have other film clips for you showing the work of the Air Patrol. Right now, I'd like to introduce a man who directs the activities of this organization, F.J. McHale, Director of Security Division, Atomic Energy Commission, the Hanford Operations Office. Mr. McHale, are you often called upon to assist in emergency situations such as the one we've just seen, the delivering of the serum? Well, Bill, such emergencies don't arise too often. But when they do, we are always willing to cooperate with any other agencies in whatever way possible. I think you might be interested in the story behind the story on this Black Widow incident. Margaret Harrison, chief pharmacist at Cadillac Ho Methodist Hospital in Richland has that story. And with a little persuasion, I think that she might tell it to us. Margaret, will you consider yourself persuaded? Uh, yes. The uh, pharmaceutical jobber that manufactured the Black Widow antivenom informed me that they were going to discontinue the manufacture of this serum. I explained to them our situation and how it was needed in the arid areas where other AEC installations were installed. Mm -hmm. They um, told me that it had been a losing proposition and that they couldn't possibly manufacture it. I explained to them that their new therapy of calcium gluconate and morphine had been very unsuccessful and that we still needed it. Several weeks later, I attended a pharmaceutical convention in Philadelphia and I talked to the director of the biological division of this pharmaceutical house and explained to them our situation and he said he would consider it and take it up with the president of the company. About two weeks later, the Western Division Manager called me and asked if I could supply 2,000 Black Widow spiders. I told him I couldn't, but I thought that he could get a supply at Grand Coulee Dam, which he did. They are now manufacturing it again from the horse serum of uh, horses that have been immunized against the Black Widow spider serum. Margaret, that's an interesting story, and I'm sure the parents of that youngster will be forever grateful for the part you played in seeing that that serum was available. Mr. McHale, this might be a good time for you to tell us something about the history of the Air Patrol at Hanford. Well, Bill, the Air Patrol was established in the early days of the project out at Hanford by the Corps of Engineers, Manhattan Engineer District. Uh, they found that this was a very good way to get uh, security from a patrol standpoint. We later developed this and uh, moved the airport from uh, Hanford to Richland. And you now have a fully modern airport installation there. Uh, we do have a fully modern installation. Let me ask you this. Is the Air Patrol unique to Hanford or is a similar organization in existence at other AEC installations? No, this is unique to Hanford. Although we do have uh, some air patrol at Oak Ridge and Los Alamos. That leads to my next question. Why do we have an air patrol at Hanford? Well, Bill, for a number of reasons. This type of terrain lends itself very readily to uh, this particular type of patrol. 
and from an economical standpoint, it uh, is much more feasible to have an air patrol rather than covering the ground on foot or on horseback or by motor vehicle. Also, we have an airspace reservation covering uh, near 1,200 square miles, and uh, uh, we must intercept any aircraft uh, that violate uh, the regulation covering this prohibited area. Now, as I understand it, in 1948, the airspace that lies behind the Hanford Barricade was designated uh, restricted airspace. That is right, Bill. Uh, this was by Executive Order 9925, and uh, it was later extended uh, to cover much more territory by Executive Order 10127. Now, how does a private pilot know that the airspace behind the barricade is restricted to flying? Bill, this airspace reservation is indicated on all na aeronautical charts and other navigational aids. For instance, we have an excerpt here of an aeronautical chart, and this has been posted at all airports within a 500 square mile radius. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how many men and planes are involved in the operation of the Air Patrol? I think uh, that Mr. Rust, chief of the Air Patrol and radio branch, can answer this question for you, Bill. Henry? Yes, Bill. We operate four aircraft. We have three Piper aircraft that we use for patrol activities, and we have one twin-engine beach. We have four pilots, four control tower operators, and four men who perform the maintenance work necessary on our aircraft and on our radio equipment. Are your patrol activities carried on around the clock on a 24-hour basis, seven days a week? Yes, they are. You must have compiled some impressive log books by now. Can you give us some idea of how many miles your planes have flown, how many hours your pilots have been in the air? Yes, our pilots fly an average of 800 hours per year. Our pilots have all flown approximately 10,000 hours apiece. Each pilot has approximately one million miles of uh, time behind him. Our annual mileage for the Air Patrol is equal to a round trip to the moon. Well, you certainly have compiled some impressive statistics. One thing I think our viewers might be interested in, Henry, now this is a model of a Piper Cub airplane similar to the ones your pilots fly in their patrol work. It differs from most Piper Cubs that I've seen in that it has tandem wheels. Uh, can you explain why this is so? Yes, uh, Bill. This tandem gear is very effective in helping us land on rough terrain. We can land in sagebrush, land in plowed fields, and in any rough area without fear of nosing over or tipping over. Henry, what do you do when a violating aircraft is either too fast or flying too high for your planes to intercept? We have worked out an agreement with the Air Force and the latest operational jet aircraft are available upon instant call from the Larson Air Force Base in Moses Lake. And those jets from Larson Air Force Base can be down here in a matter of minutes yes, to intercept that plane for you. Tell me this, Henry, what qualities go to make up the good Air Patrol pilot? Our pilots all have the military background. In addition to that, they all have acquired a considerable amount of civilian experience. Uh, we require a minimum of 3,000 hours in a pilot when we hire him, as well as being qualified in both single and multi-engine aircraft. Certainly your requirements are quite strict, and that is what ensures getting good pilots for the Air Patrol. Now, Mr. McHale, one final question for you. I know that for the most part, your work is of a serious nature, but uh, have there been any amusing incidents happen since the Air Patrol was formed at Hanford? Well, Bill, there have been a number of incidents. Uh, one that comes to my mind right now concerns a no PT-19 that landed at the airport uh, two years ago in the autumn. And uh, two gentlemen stepped out of the aircraft, uh, bundled up like Eskimos, and said, fill it up. And we said, do you know where you are? And they said, yes, Walla Walla. <laughs> and we said, we're sorry, you're at Richland. This is a closed field, and we have no gas for private aircraft. And they said, well, if you don't like our business, we'll take it elsewhere. So we were kind enough to give them directions to Pasco and sent them on their way. Well, it's nice that your work does have its lighter side at times. Now let's take a look at some of the other day-to-day -day activities of the Air Patrol.
That, in brief, is the story of the Air Patrol. We hope you have a better understanding of why we have an Air Patrol at Hanford and of the work performed by its personnel. And like me, I'm sure you'll rest easier as long as those wings are over Hanford guarding the atomic secret so vital to the defense of this nation. I want to thank those who appeared on tonight's program. F.J. McHale, Director, AEC Security Division of the Hanford Operations Office, and Henry Rust, Chief of Air Patrol and Shipment Branch, and Margaret Harrison, Chief Pharmacist at Cadillac Methodist Hospital. We also want to thank the management and staff of Cascade Television for making time for this program available on a public service basis. This program was presented as an educational feature of the General Electric Company and the United States Atomic Energy Commission. We invite you to watch next week at this time for an interesting panel show, Hanford Science Forum, with your host, Frank Losh. We'll be back two weeks from tonight for another visit inside Hanford. Now this is Bill Boehner saying thank you for watching and good night.